Hey, this is Jacob at SalesPad, and today we're going to take a look at setting up Ship2 to, um, to interact with UPS WorldShip. Uh, so you're going to set up a Ship2 connection. It's the same way as setting up a connection in GP. So once you have that connection, or in, in SalesPad, so once you have that connection set up, you can go ahead and log in. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and log into my Ship2 screen, and it's going to take me to my activation. So I can go ahead and activate this. Um, against two link. Um, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and log into a different company and not go through my actual activation. Um, so I'm going to pick a different company here, go into that company, and it takes me to my ship to screen. Now, there's a couple of things that we want to do first um, before we can actually get ship to to work with World Ship. So I'm going to hit the blue button here to take me back into the main screen, and I'm going to need to click on the little gears that we have here. These double gears are going to Add a user to the ship to or to the world ship database. So by clicking on that, it's going to bring up my configure world ship server, and then I just need to click on enable ship to user. Now in this case, I've already done it, so it's going to come up and tell me that it's already there and contact my uh, administrator. So it's already been it's already there, but for the first time or the first time that you use ship to, you're going to need to do that. So that takes care of adding our SA user or our ship to user to the UPS world ship database. Once that is done, we're actually ready to set up ship to. Um, and control how we're importing our uh, documents and then writing them back. So to do that, I'm going to click on the, the single gear on the Ship2 import screen, and that's going to take me into my setup screen, or into my options manager. So a couple things here that uh, we're going to take a look at. The first one is our COD terms. These are my payment terms out of GP, and I can mark which payment terms are actual COD terms so we can print that COD amount on the actual um, UPS label for the UPS driver. So in this case, I'm going to mark just this one COD um, payment term as a COD term. I have my ship to import options. I have a couple fields that I can pull in here. The first one is the declared value. I can actually look at a user field on the sales document and pull in the declared value of the shipment. My bill transportation too, I can specify how it's going to go, whether it's going to go to the customer or to my own UPS account. Bill account number, if I'm billing this to the customer, then I also need to pass in a bill to account number. And then I have an email source. This is going to be pulled from the sales document or from some other user field. This controls what email gets passed to WorldShip, which will then be passed on to Quantum View. Sales line options. Um, this allows me to pull in tracking information, to pull in and write back tracking information per line. We uh, have one customer that's using this, so we do recommend that, that you consult us or give us a call if you have interest in using um, tracking per line. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and skip over this for in the meantime. Our shipping method map, um, this is probably the most important part of the setup. Um, I have my shipping methods out of GP and then my services that are tied to either UPS or FedEx. So in this case, I'm only going to be using UPS. So I'm going to take my ground shipping method from GP and tie it to UPS ground as a, my UPS service. Then I also have my freight destination override. This allows me to specify where the freight is going to be written back to when I export the, or when I uh, process this document through WorldShip. So I can either have, if I leave it blank, it's going to write back to the default or I can specify a user field or to some other location that it's going to write to, whether it's a GP or sales pad user field. So I will need to go through and set up each of my shipping methods and each of the, the UPS services that ties to that shipping method. My ship to user options um, allows me to set a warehouse filter. Um, these, so the document has to be shipping out of this warehouse. If it's not, then it will not be able to be processed through Ship2. So we can only process documents that are listed here um, with this warehouse. If it is blank, we'll process all documents. We have the ability to add the charges back to the COD amount. Um, that's just an option to use from WorldShip. And then our shipping monitor batch, so we can specify a specific GP or sales pad batch to look at the sales documents coming out of. And then our Ship2 write back options. This, for the main checkbox, allows us to tell it to write, um, write back at all. If we uncheck it, it's not going to write anything back. As long as we have this checked, it's going to write back. If we don't, uh, if we check the box to prompt the write back, then it's going to prop up a window and allow us to decide how we're going to write it back. Our freight, this is where we set our default freight, where it's to be written back to, as well as the handling charge. Our sales document note, we'll write a note to this tab. Um, then we can write back the tracking number, we can specify for it to move to a new batch once we've processed it, and then we can specify where the COD amount will be written to as well. Um, so that takes care of our setup. In part two, we're going to take a look at actually processing documents through Ship2. So again, this is Jacob, and this is how we're going to set up Ship2 and use it with UPS WorldShip. Thanks for watching.